This week on Rockstar Superhero. Living in the United States presents many difficulties when you're trying to find new music for inspiration. Oftentimes, I leave through YouTube, watching older favorites, and then the algorithm points me towards a band I might enjoy. This happened again recently with a Danish band called Vola. Vola writes incredibly thoughtful, engaging and melodic songs with really complex rhythms that speak to the drummer in me. Having reached out via social media to connect with the band through their management, I was so happy to find that Adam Yanzi, their drummer, was open and available for a chat to talk about their new album, Witness. Witness is due out on May 21st, and at the time of this recording, well, it's still roughly six weeks away. I hope that when you hear the show and realize that not only Vola is worth cherishing, but that its young drummer, Adam, is a man with a destiny and a purpose. He's a new classic for sure. This band is a new classic. This is my interview with the thoughtful and insightful Adam Yanzi on the Rockstar Superhero Podcast. So Adam Yanzi, welcome to my podcast. I'm stoked, Thank man. You. This is Thank this you. is wonderful. Yeah, you have um I'm just going to jump right into this. You have a fantastic ability to play for the song and yet you add these super complex patterns um a, a lot of ostinatos a lot of stacked beats that are yeah. like i like i told you before we started rolling our our jam my jam um but you have a very musical ear and i can tell you're listening to the space between the notes and that isn't common today <laughs> you know yeah. And I wondered, I wondered what your thoughts are when you hear somebody catch sort of the intricacies of your music rather than, wow, you're a really great drummer. I think that's, that's like one of the bigger compliments I could get because uh, it means someone is really listening to the, yeah, to the nuances, to the intention behind everything. Yeah. Uh, so that it means a lot to hear that. Yeah. yeah, I have been wanting to ask this of somebody from Scandinavia, so I'm going to yeah. ask this of you. You get the question today. Yes. <laughs> Everybody I speak to in that area speaks wonderful English. How, yeah. how many different languages, is there a standard in Scandinavia, how many languages or what languages you learn as a child? Yes, so um, basically you learn, everyone learns English in school. Mm -hmm. um, on a pretty decent level, I would say. Um, and then during like high school, you get to choose between French, German, and um, Spanish. Wow. Um, and you, yeah, you, you take a few years on one of those languages. You can choose other languages if you have like a special reason for it. Like you're, um, you're from a specific country, so you can, you can uh, yeah, yeah, dive into other languages. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. So you you touched on my next subject. One of the things I love to find out about is what names mean, etymology, and uh -huh. also family heritage. I think that's a huge part of the formation of an artist because it, it you know it shows sort of where that DNA comes from, so to speak. Could you tell us a little bit about your family heritage, um, how your family ended up in in Sweden versus any yeah. other Scandinavian country and how it all came together for you? So basically, uh, yeah, my dad um, uh, moved from, from Palestine to Poland. Um, he lived in a few different countries before that. Wow. And he met my mom there, so she, my mom is Polish. And uh, both of them uh, worked in healthcare. And um, I don't know exactly why they chose Sweden to go to. Um, but yeah, it seems like a pretty good uh, country to to uh, to go to when you work in healthcare. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, so so they just moved to Sweden basically, um, and I was born here in Sweden. Um, so it's it's um, yeah, I don't know exactly the the specific reason for why why Sweden and not Denmark, for example. But sure. Yeah. Sure. No, it's it's fascinating. Um, obviously, I ask that for a lot of reasons because yeah. culture influence is a huge part of who we are it's not it's not the dna you know the physical um i'm a certain ethnicity or whatever but it's really about where you you ended up and yeah. the family that surrounds you um yeah. how did swedish culture have an effect on you as a young man growing up and and becoming an artist i think that that has a huge impact because i think that the swedish culture is um in, in a maybe not so deliberate way, it really, really impacts um, people's musical choices, I would mm. say. So so for my musical journey, I think it has been a huge part of it because of how introverted Scandinavians can be, right. of how the landscape is, of um, the weather, and also the um, how the year looks like during uh, I have no idea how it is in, in the US, but I, I know that this is a huge difference between European countries. So in in Sweden, you have during winter, you might have a few days where it's like barely a few hours of sun and just night the rest of the day. And during the summer, it's the opposite. Right. Um, so that can throw some people off when they when they visit Sweden. Um, and also, if you go further north in Sweden, it's even more dark or light depending on the time of the year mm -hmm. and i think all that really um, feeds into your uh, creative choices as a musician as well as the you know the flat landscape the, the big forests and uh, yeah just the 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 kind of cold and barren feel that you get from all that openness but also the warmth you get from you know, staying indoors when there's a snowstorm outside, and you just, uh, yeah, you just stay warm, stay, stay calm, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that, yeah, the culture has has a huge impact. Yeah. On, on, on that, yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I was talking to Seaman Sunness. I, I, uh, I don't know if you know Seaman personally, but I know he. Before you came in the band, he sort of covered right i believe yeah. that was how it worked um but uh he had mentioned a couple of things about that he said that yeah mm -hmm. the, the 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 nature of the weather is a huge component to sort of who we are and and how we create because we spend a lot of time either indoors or outdoors but it's extreme mm -hmm. right exactly. that during the summer months you're kind of outside all the time in the in the winter months you're wood shedding you know yeah. and I wondered if if the the coronavirus had any effect on you in that regard, or if it just reminded you that oh yeah, it's dark and cold here in the winter. <laughs> we we stay inside all the time because I can't imagine it changed much for you. It didn't. It didn't for me. I live in a very cold, you know, sort of a wet climate. We're inside all the year, so I, I don't really notice much. Ah, okay, yeah. Uh, what what area is that? If I may. Ask? I live right outside of Seattle, but I live in the mountains. So I'm on the, you know, northwest coast of, of the United States. Mm -hmm. And I am up, I'm not up that high, but maybe uh, 300 meters. Ah, uh, okay. And so it's, you know, it snowed this morning. I mean, there's mm -hmm. snow outside in my yard. <laughs> Could it? So, so you never know, but, uh, it's, yeah. you know, but it was also uh, about 22 degrees yesterday. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 Celsius. I'm trying yeah. to translate for you, um, <laughs> and uh, and it was gorgeous. So mm. it's it's very much you know up and yeah. down, up and down. Um, yeah, I guess it's the sim similar here with the what you mentioned that it didn't impact me too much. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, most of the part just stay indoors anyway. Um, um, I guess the like. Of course, with the shows and uh, restaurants uh, closing down and so on, we notice that part of it. But in general, I usually don't spend too much time outside. Um, so yeah, for me, it's a bit the same. I didn't 
it didn't change too much for me. Actually. Yeah. Um, something else Simon had said is, is in Norway, they have a thing called Jantelöven. And yes. I, is that part of Swedish culture as well? Yeah, exactly. Jantelöven. It's, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so this translate, this makes a lot of sense to me because every, again, Scandi sort of Scandinavian musician mm. I've spoken to, and I, I have a lot of them apparently that I love, <laughs> is, is they, um, are all sort of you mentioned is sort of introverted or quiet mm. and 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 maybe even a little uncomfortable about praise about being told what an exceptional musician yeah. you know you are for example um my wife is japanese and when i go to japan um i find that it is not a touchy people don't touch people oh, don't okay. They don't hug. When I hug my nephews, they just put their <laughs> they put their arms to their side and they look confused and scared. <laughs> it, is it is it like that as well? Is it a very very keep to yourself society? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. I don't know if you've seen this uh, this um, image that has been around on the internet for a few years. It's like Scandinavian bus stops. Everyone stands <laughs> like a meter or two. Uh, uh, <laughs> apart from each other sure and uh like that's that's a big difference especially when when people immigrate to, to scandinavia from let's say african countries mm -hmm. where it's where it usually is much more social mm -hmm. then on the bus when there is like um let's say there are two seats uh, open on this side and on this side there's one seat open and someone's sitting next to the window if you don't sit on the on the open side where you, where you have all the space for yourself and you choose right. to sit next to someone you're super weird like uh, that's how people see you like okay what why did this person choose to sit next to me is it a creep or you know <laughs> in in other places it's it's normal it's rather rude to not sit next to someone and maybe strike up a, a conversation mm -hmm. um so yes definitely uh, swedish people are more uh, to themselves um about the like the uh, physical contact aspect of it mm -hmm. i think it's a bit different from from japan because you you mentioned like uh, even your your family um when you hug them they're a bit like oh <laughs> yeah in sweden that's a bit different you you you're expected to uh, hug your your family you know that's part of it but if it's uh maybe the line goes at like close friend but <laughs> beyond that then then it's a bit weird to to hug someone yeah no I, I i understand that you know uh americans we are um culturally we are loud brash annoying people we we want <laughs> everybody to see us and hear us and we bump into you and we we when we walk by you on the street we nod and we mm -hmm. we we expect a response even in this coronavirus you know you're walking around with a mask on uh, and we expect somebody to at least acknowledge us it's a yeah. strange strange thing i don't know why it is this way but anyways back on track here um i'm a big as i mentioned a uh, name guy but really into etymology mm -hmm. and Adam is your name. It obviously we know what Adam means. You know, yeah. you you are the first, my friend. Um, how does that translate? How does your name translate into what you do, how you were raised, and what influence you have on people around you? Wow, that's a good question. Uh, I haven't really thought too much about it, but I've. Um... One thing that I that I know that my name has brought me is the fact that I've been recognized based off the name when I was a kid. Mm. You know, like everyone, probably the same thing in the US, people will say Adam and Eve and uh, things like that. And that small extra little attention that it brings. Right. For a kid, it's a big thing. Like it's, uh, yeah, you're, uh, you really don't, at least me, don't, don't take that too lightly um and i wouldn't say that like that that has given me a appetite for attention i would rather say the opposite um 
because of also this Scandinavian introverted culture, mm -hmm. that combination um, has kind of maybe been a small part of what what feeds into my my place as a musician where I don't want to take too much attention where it's not needed. Right. Um, and also, I think just the, the Scandinavian culture in general probably f feeds into that part as well. Because um, I'm really, I'm really um, happy about sometimes just being that drummer in the back, not right. needing to uh, to take any attention and letting the yeah the vocalist do his thing or you know. Um, so that's maybe something that the, the name also has been feeding into together with the Scandinavian culture. Mm. Um, but also, as you mentioned, uh, where the name com comes from, it's it's uh, religious. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it kind of has um, I haven't I haven't taken like my path into a religious direction but rather the opposite mm -hmm. um, but I would still say that the name is slightly part of that journey um, and then maybe you can see the theme here where oh, sorry I have alarms oh, it's okay <laughs> Forgot to, to turn them on off. That's, I have. It's all right. Uh, I recently had eye surgery, so I have alarms oh. to remind me about the the drops. Uh, oh. So I forgot to to change them. So, do you want to uh, take Do you want to take a moment to do your drops? It's okay. Oh, I mean, it's, I can... it, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> no okay. worries. Okay. I can pause. I can uh, edit all of this, so it's good. Uh, okay. No, it's it's fine. Thank you, though. Thank you, though. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you probably noticed the the pattern of. Um, Okay, here's something feeding me attention. Here's uh, something feeding me this religious background, and so on and right. so on. I choose to go in the opposite direction instead, mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of how I work in general in music. I don't know if that makes sense, but it does. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so well then. So now I need to ask then. So your your father, you said, was Palestinian, correct? Yeah. So were you raised in a religious culture, or and you chose to just kind of step off to the side for a bit, or maybe forever, or or are you just in general because of because Scandinavia has a huge what I would almost call an anti-religious stance it's very you know what I mean there doesn't it, certainly as far as like Christianity is concerned that's not really welcome in Scandinavia yeah. so so if you don't mind I mean I, we don't have to get too personal but where does where does that fit for you oh yeah I'm I'm, I'm happy to talk about this um and you're right about Scandinavia it's it's very uh uh, secular like mm -hmm. yeah basically no matter what religion um it is people want to keep it away from from the public space yeah um it is it's not like that a hundred percent like there's still uh, plenty of, of uh, religion going around here but but uh basically in general it's like that and uh for me i was raised in a in an kind of unexpected household where my dad came from a Muslim background and my mom as a Polish comes from a um, Catholic background. Oh, interesting. Okay. I so, thought maybe Jewish. Okay. Oh ah, yeah, it could, could be, but um, yeah. wow. Yeah. So, so basically Muslim and Christian in the yeah. same household, yeah. but yeah. that was already the, like a big step away from, from the, those religions because yeah, you're expected to, to um, uh, marry a Muslim as a Muslim and uh, as a Christian, uh, it can be like, yeah, especially in Poland, like uh, a Muslim or an Arab is, is a bit like, okay, <laughs> let's stay away. Yeah, um, yeah. So that that whole, like those two sides have, have also been part of, of uh, me growing up, like how people choose to identify me uh, and, with that, like I wasn't pushed into any religion. Um, both my parents were like moderate. They weren't crazy about their, their religions. Um, they still <laughs> practiced it a bit, um, okay. but yeah, no, nothing, nothing intense. It was pretty, pretty 
soft and normal. Um, I went to church a few times uh, as kids. Oh boy! Oh boy! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was that like? When I mean, it seems like you were in a really positive family environment because yeah. I mean, you know, sorry for me sort of jumping in, but I think Stories. about I think about that and. And I imagine it's very hard for somebody like your father or your mother who has mm. a, a, a very particular religious upbringing. And then they meet somebody who does not share pretty much any. Uh. And now, granted, in your case, uh, both your parents have the same sort of main God, if you will, right? The yeah. the, the the Hebrew yeah. the Hebrew God. Exactly. Uh, you know, and, and of course your names so are obviously again going back to that yeah. sort of springs from that. It would yeah. make sense, but I but it sounds like you had a really positive environment growing up, and your yeah. parents um both care for people very much, you know, in that profession. Mm -hmm. So no wonder you became who you are. <laughs> you, I mean, you know, you've been encouraged and loved and honored, yeah. and again, given that name, it means something, Adam, right? Yeah, yeah, you're very, very right about that. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's. Uh, I would say that the name is kind of like a, yeah, like a gift, uh, like not, not like a, a gift that enables enables me to to do this and that, but more uh, like a token from my parents, a token of appreciate appreciation. Yeah, uh, which is something I haven't thought about before. So that's. That's pretty cool to to discover, um, but yeah, it's uh, I th I'm I'm pretty grateful to have had that upbringing um, because I've been able to if I wanted to go into the the to into Islam or Christianity I could have like mm -hmm. it was it was there but uh, it wasn't forced, um, which enabled me to choose my own path and I chose none of them and mm -hmm. like there were no hard feelings or, or anything like that. Um, the, the, the resistance was, has, had already been dealt with before that from, uh, from others. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, so I'm pretty grateful to have already been like, I was, I was, um, uh, I went through a shortcut, so I didn't have to go through that big gotcha. path of resistance. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I will tell you that, so I, you don't know this, but I am a drummer and I've been playing for f over 40 years. I've been in it a long time. And the one thing that drew me to you, the instant, first of all, I mean, I heard, you know, the latest singles and I lost my mind. I lost my mind. I mean, you have no idea. I've been preaching you guys for weeks now, just lost my mind. <laughs> and and then I watched, you know, I watched your video, your playthrough of 24 Light Years, which then led me to other things. Um, but here's the thing. You say you're not religious, but I tell you, my friend, you absolutely worship when you play drums. Thank you. You, Thank you. you, you absolutely do. It's very clear you're in a worship space. Now, you may not necessarily equate that to I pick this, you know, version of God or, or mm. whatever. But it seems to me that regardless of your faith bent, that you are in a very clear place of, of worship, of love, mm. of um, melody and harmony. It's, you know, you can see that you are in it and you're immersed in it. And it's really, really, it's beautiful. And that's, I think that's why the music really truly works as well as it does, because I don't know the other gentlemen in the band and, and we're going to start talking about the music now, <laughs> but, but it is, it is, it has to be the same way with them. It has to be because you can't create, I mean, I will tell you, I know it's new and I know it's new to me, but I really believe 24 light years, that song is a, is a masterpiece. I mean, is it, is it, you, you guys will be remembered for that. There's something about the combination of complexity and simple lilting harmony and melody, the way, the way the, uh, the anticipations of the beats happen, but the vocals sing straight through. It's, 
it's mind blowing. And um, <laughs> I'm going to tap, I'm going to, I'm going to put it on the show because I think it's just, it's a it's it's one of the perfect songs. It's a perfect song. Wow. That means a lot. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, well, you're welcome. It's not it's it's completely earned, buddy. Um <laughs> so look, now that I'll stop praising you, but so let me ask you this. How does a Swede end up in a Danish band? I mean, wow. I get you're not too far away, but I'm curious what the connecting tissue was to get you into Vola because you guys are Oh my god! Um, Facebook, basically. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they uh, they were looking for a for a drummer. Um, I don't remember. I'm bad with with numbers. I don't remember exactly which year it was, but um, their um, original drummer left the band um, just before they went on their first tour with Catatonia. Wow. Um, so they got a standing drummer, Simon Simon Sandes, for that uh, tour. And then uh, after the tour, they started looking for a permanent drummer in Denmark, and they wow. couldn't find anyone who they thought fit. So they thought, why not look in Scandinavia? They posted in a Facebook group uh, for drummers, for Swedish drummers, and said, uh, yeah, hey, we're looking for a drummer. The post got like one like, so I don't know like, how many people not noticed it. So I oh my said, God. Let's go. <laughs> I contacted them and um, I uh, did the drum cover for Straight the Skies, which is mm -hmm. filmed up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, um, they were pretty happy to start working with me. So we met, we played a show together, and then I got to uh, sign the papers. Wow. Much. Wow. That's like a, a dream come true. I mean, yeah. How well was the band known at that time? I mean, just through Scandinavia, or did it have a European following already? Because they had released that record. Exactly, they had re released the, the first album in Mazes, um, yeah. and they were actually um, more known in uh, Europe than Scandinavia, which okay. is kind of still the case. Um, where we are um, um, gaining more of a foothold in Scandinavia and Denmark now, but. It's definitely one of those bands that made a following, um, a bigger following outside of their own country first. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's also kind of unexpected, I, I think. Um, but at that time, the there weren't like I had I had heard of the band, um, but it wasn't like one of the the bands that I heard all the time everywhere. Um, so there was a name to it, but it was, I was still curious about what it was. And, you know, so it was as much an audition for them as it was for me, pretty much. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. You know, the, the hardest part about being in America, at least for somebody like myself, is I'm in the constant pursuit of finding new material that material, excuse me, that speaks to me that right that captures me that that has an, a new essence something new and original and and i find over and over which is why i'm talking to so many scandinavian musicians that it's all coming out of northern europe i mean obviously mm -hmm. you have bands like gujira that are you know yeah. you know which are just fantastic and yeah. and coming out of central europe but i guess in general it seems to me that you know europe is because it's older maybe and more mature that um there's all these styles and they're so much more accepted meaning it's about the art itself mm. versus what's cool at the moment mm. you know yeah yeah it's uh i think in northern europe specifically like you say there is um there's a good system for for um allowing people to explore. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it also has to do something with what I think is a bit of a double-edged sword with, with America as well. Um, the entrepreneurship, yeah. like the, it doesn't really allow for that kind of experimentation and failure as much, but at the same time, um, the, the culture of entrepreneurship, which, exists in America there it doesn't really exist in the same way here 
Mm. Um, so I would say it's it's more safe here, which means um, like it's more safe in the in the like success slash failure ratio. But mm. but it's it's um, of course less safe and more daring in the in the um, uh, risks you can take as a musician. Like you can you do a I don't know ska polka black metal band and uh, <laughs> if it doesn't go your way you do something else like it's right it's fine. like uh, shining in uh, norway exactly exactly yeah, yeah. um and uh, yeah like the systems are there to support that um there is um financial help for for uh, for upcoming bands with uh, amazing uh, rehearsal spaces um if they want to uh, play shows or festivals um, like specifically for for us, um, there is a, a, a government funded, uh, a few actually government funded like culture associate associations which can help upcoming bands, um, and one of them which uh, helps me with my rehearsal space, um, and uh, I think. Yeah, it's through them that I got my, I played my first big festival with my previous band, Sweden Rock Festival. So they have their own stage there and they invite some of their bands to play there and so on. So like that, you don't have to be um, mainstream uh, formula, which you know would, will work to have those opportunities. You can do something completely crazy and still get those opportunities. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's pretty cool. It's nice. Yeah. I, I don't complain about it, but at the same time, uh, the, the maybe the the like the tougher uh, way, and which is uh, in America, I would I, I think it 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 also gives birth to some like really great and tough ideas. Yeah, where yeah. If yeah. you want to make it really like you cannot just fool around. You, you really got to go for it. And I like that kind of um, work ethic. Yeah. You know, I appreciate that you said that. It, there is a grind mentality here mm -hmm. <clears throat> that is, well, we have no choice. We don't have a government funded, you know, arts mm -hmm. programs, that sort of thing. And yet I would tell you that I would love, you know, I mean, I would have never left the business. I. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this, you know, this show isn't about me, but, you know, I was in that, that business um, mm -hmm. until about 17 years ago. And I just had had enough. I'd had enough of sort of pursuing and the frustrations of really mm -hmm. never breaking. And I, you know, I mean, I was fortunate to be in bands with, you know, development opportunities, but those mm -hmm. things never, you know, they never went past that development stage. And that is heartbreaking. And when you get into your, mid to late thirties and especially the culture in America, you look around and all your friends are in their twilights of their careers are already 20 mm. years in and they're doing well. And maybe they have a few things, they have a house and a couple of mm. cars. And so there's that culture of failure. There's that feeling of, Oh, I'm an idiot artist who still might as well be living in my basement of my parents' house. And, a lot of us do that. A lot of us go all the way to the edge and then fall off the cliff because mm. we we don't know what else to do. I did that. Mm. And and I'm 54 now, man. I'm an old man. <laughs> oh, no, that's not so old. <laughs> well, I know it's not. Trust me, when you're 54, you'll know. Um, but, <laughs> but it's what's interesting is, is I still see things as though I'm a teenager. Mm. I, you know, I don't look like a teenager, but but there is that feeling of there's a requirement that you have to be at a certain oh, level yes. that culturally yeah. to fit in, to matter, to count, you know, mm -hmm. you have to have had a, a career and, and maybe a savings account and you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. be doing okay, not yeah. mooching off society. So mm -hmm. I admit to some jealousy and envy because yeah. I would love to be able to be sponsored to do this even for example. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. well, let's uh, let me ask you these questions because I really want to talk about the new record. Um, I, yeah. uh, first of all, before we get to that, I do need to ask this question about you as a drummer, as a percussionist. Mm -hmm. What do you see your primarily role as? You know, in Vola, what what drives you as a drummer? What's your 
what's your purpose in vola mm. um that's actually something i haven't quite verbalized before it's it, it it's kind of crazy it has just appeared naturally mm -hmm. um which is weird it was like we we, we joke about it in the band sometimes that it was kind of like the the sound was cut out for me mm. uh, because they had some ideas um they programmed some 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 drums for some riffs like for smart friend for example and they did it with like half electronic sounding stuff and uh but they had no idea how how a drummer would figure that out but they right. thought we'll see what happens and it fit me perfectly with my stacks and um and all that um so that was like i didn't need to adapt too much or you know change things too much it was just there like okay cool that sounds like a this kind of stack that's this kind of stack i can just play that on my drums and let's go um so i think the the role i have in the band has just kind of almost just been there uh but to put it into words i think something we already mentioned is um uh, a role which I think everyone in the band has. Um, the role of knowing when to be in front and when to not be in front. Yeah. Like who's gonna take the attention and why. Yeah. Uh, not overdo it, not do too many crazy things. When it's time you can you can go, but I think yeah, I think that's such an important part of the sound. Um, because there's like, like yeah you know it yourself i could i could do so many random things here and there but yeah. just keeping that space open i think that's um yeah, yeah. The, the most important role i would have as a as a musician in the band um because what we do is we want to we want to really serve the song um and i know many people say that but that's really something that we're we are building the songs and not the the not the instrumentalists. Um, so that's why there are songs like Wheeler, for example, where the drums are, you know, <laughs> meat and potatoes. Yeah. Then there's Twenty Four Light Years, where it's much more complicated. Um, and I think that also feeds into the sound that we have and why some people may like the diversity and some people may be disappointed with some songs because it's not heavy enough or not complicated enough and so on sure um, but yeah i think that feeds into it where we just do what it takes to make the song uh the way we want it instead of focusing too much on performance and so on yeah you know i i know i've already said this about the you know the musicality in general and the ability to play for the song the ability to step back the ability to step forward. Um, but I listened, you know, what is specifically talking about 24 light years because it, it really has made a, a it made such an impact. I bought the 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 record. And uh, you know, I mean I it hasn't even been released yet, and I only have the three songs, and they're great. I mean, all three songs are great. I, I love they're really great. The but is the reason 24 light years really speaks to me is because it's a real concrete. Actually, um, a perfect example of progressive music because it starts out a certain way and it ends, even though with the same melodies, the same, right, the same general feel of the song, the song builds as it goes and it's clearly bookended. Um, but as a drummer, see, b b only drummers are going to notice this. Everybody else is just <laughs> going to say, that's a good song. They're not going to think yeah. about it. But you go from that stack pattern in the first verse mm. to a much more traditional driving double bass part in the second. Yes. And then and then to a very open, straight, fo almost 4-4, four, four, mm. flat open feeling in the, in the, in the bridge because... There's all those anticipated beats, da 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 you know what I mean? And then, and you, and you, and it has to support that really, really, that half note 
melody mm. that you know mm. it, it has to support that there's no other way it works mm. and, and 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 so for it to be so clearly building and dramatic and cinematic that's the one word that comes out mm. of out of me instantly when i hear your your music all of your music is wow this is this is a music for a movie <laughs> is is it builds and it hits that crescendo and just like mm. a movie it gives you a break it gives you a breath mm. and then and then oh by the way one more time <laughs> and that is and then it and it doesn't do it long it just gives mm. you a it just gives you one chorus one chorus. it doesn't it doesn't even it, it just it just what mm. so mm. you then you're left wanting more yes and that is a perfect songwriting example and so I wondered who wrote the song. It, uh, it wasn't written bef even before. I mean, was it written years ago before you came in the band? Was it written as a group? You know, how, how did that come together? You know, I just love an example of how a song yeah. comes together with your band. So usually, um, like, we, we don't have a specific set way of writing songs. It's very different depending on the song. Some songs, it's uh, Asger, the vocalist just putting together a demo we all feel like nothing needs changing here we just do our small detail work and that's the song mm -hmm. uh, other songs uh, it's old riffs that we recycle and and uh, you know have old demos and we look through them and think why didn't we do anything with that um and then we work on it together um but on this specific song it's actually the first song where uh, it started with me um so I made a drum groove, the, that specific stack groove. Mm -hmm. I sent it to the guys. I made some random melody on top of it. Um, you can still find the, the clip on my, uh, my Instagram somewhere. And uh, then I think Martin, maybe the keyboardist, took that groove. He made the, like, the main melody. Yeah. And then yeah. Nikolai worked on that. Asger put it all together. And that was the song, basically. Um, so it's um yeah it's it's like a very uh i don't know if i i can't find the right word for it but it wasn't like deliberate like that's the song we're gonna make it just grew like okay we have these drums okay cool that's the melody all right then we need something else here what happens there and it just grew basically yeah yeah you know it's it's, it's fun that you said this because and then based on the early parts of our conversation where we talk about like faith or no faith or yeah. right all the things um and this isn't a religious conversation by any means but i i have found that music is my you know i think we've talked about this a little um you know i in america we're i mean for the most part it's a it's either a christian culture or it's not you know what i mean it, yeah, yeah. so in other words you're all the other things or you're christian you know what i mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and i grew up in the church but I'm not religious at all, but I, but I'm very much, uh, I hate the term spiritual because it sort of seems to, uh, it seems to imply that you don't have any faith. You just like how it feels or something. Yeah, and, I, and, exactly. and I, and I actually am a man of faith. I, I, I also like how it feels, but mm. for me, the music is worshipful yeah. and, and it seems to me from a songwriting point of view, Perfect songs come because of perfect moments mm -hmm. and, and a perfect combination of players. And, and so have you ever considered, even in your non-religious ways, that it's possible that God went and put you guys <laughs> together? Because, because really, Adam, it's, I can't stop praising it. it <laughs> it's really special and there's uh there's an emotional maturity to it that did not exist before you came mm. in the band and not a not a slight to the other man but there's a reason he left and it was mm. so it's almost like a a person dying so another might live mm. you you came in because this space was given to you it was made for you does that make sense yes yes i think it's a, it's a very interesting way to put it um, and I like what you mentioned about, like the difference between, yeah, like the the kind of religious faith and spirituality. Mm -hmm. And I think 
there is some um, like it's it's kind of like like uh, pieces of a puzzle just fitting together and if the piece doesn't fit it goes somewhere else so if i wasn't the right fit for it i would have you know fallen off that table and right gone somewhere else i think it's it's um it's definitely something where it could be like uh, yeah, the perfect coincidence where you know you're just moved in these directions and uh, when you when you allow yourself to go with the flow and go wherever life takes you, you uh, can find yourself in these kind of situations where it feels like things just fit well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because there were, there were when I saw that post, that Facebook post, there were of course all the all the thoughts of, well, okay, I'm not going to be good enough, so why even bother? Right. Or okay. maybe they don't see my email. Or well, it's another country. How am I going to organize it? But you know, I thought, let's see what happens. And I just went with, with my went with my gut feeling, and see <laughs> where it ended up. And yeah. if I hadn't done that, if I had listened to any of those doubts, yeah, and yeah. fought against that current, then you know, none of this would have happened. So I think there's definitely something to that. Uh, whether you want to put the name, like whatever name you want to put on it, right, right, it's, yeah, right. it's uh, yeah, it's like a, yeah, uh, um, I don't know, magnetic force. Or I don't know. Um, I think that's uh, that's. Uh, it could be a good good way to put it and that doesn't mean it has to be like you say the the uh, spirituality doesn't have to be superstitious no it's it's it can still be you know transcendent and and feel very good that's it uh, transcendent can, yeah exactly uh and i think that's circling back to to music basically that's what when you're in that spot in the when you when that when whatever song it is hits that perfect place for you it really feels transcendent um and that's uh yeah like you say that's worship in a way yeah 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 no i i i i'm gonna keep praising you i i love it <laughs> i am you. crazy about it um so i have two more questions for you okay uh one you're clearly a fan of ostinato's stack beats we've talked about this a, a couple of times now that seems to imply that you are a, are maybe influenced by somebody like terry bozio yes. uh and so see i'm i i had a feeling so <laughs> so what's interesting about this is you have a maturity um and this is going to sound really strange but <laughs> i think you have a maturity that bozio does not have oh. Uh, what I found, and you may agree or disagree, but Bozio has, so for those who do not know, Terry Bozio is considered by, especially by drummers to be one of the most influential, most important drummers of all time, because he really has created uh, his own thing. He's, he's found a way to stack drum parts and create these patterns called ostinatos that repeat and roll, and then the music is written over the top of them. Um, and they're hard to do, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not, not all, not all of them, but a lot of them. And, yeah. and, and my friend Adam here, um, has created this beautiful ostinato for the song 24 light years that we keep talking about. Um, but Terry in his, uh, eccentrism has over the years gotten to the point where he's built such a large drum set and 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 mm -hmm. basically in a sense does the opposite he doesn't play for the song anymore mm -hmm. it's really all about featuring the drum and i understand that it, it, mm -hmm. when he tours he tours it's the drums and yeah, exactly. and whatever else comes with it but it's the drums first mm -hmm. however that does not work in a band environment and i mm -hmm. saw him a few years ago play with uh, UK when they did their reunion tour and it was awful. It was, oh. <laughs> and I hate to say this out loud because, you know, I love Terry. I've met him. He's a, he's mm. a fantastic human. Um, but, oh my God, it was, mm. just, it was just, it's just, it's all China symbols and lots of drum mm. notes and no feel, just no feel. Mm. And it broke my heart. 
because I adored him as a young man. And so, so here you and I are, you clearly have that influence. How do you hold yourself back? Uh, <laughs> um, so first I would say that the, the biggest part of, of Harry Bozio, which influences me, it's um, the stacks and the adventurous playing not so much the the ostinatos and and uh, all that craziness mm -hmm. so already there i think um i am able to remove that prestige part um and i i've said it um quite a lot but the the corn album where yes Terry played a few songs on yes um with um it's called untitled um and he also played a few songs for, uh, or one song. Yeah, he he played together with Vinny Colaiuta on one song on the yeah. Queen of the Dam soundtrack. Yes. Uh, and something about that, how he's put into con context like that, it really spoke to me and how he made it sound so mechanical and organic mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. Um, so he really inspired me to explore with different symbols, different stacks and different ways to play, just different grooves uh, to go against the, what is expected of a drummer. Um, yeah. About the, the ostinatos and the weird patterns. Um, that's actually something I haven't really gone into deliberately um because i don't really go into music theory too much uh, mm -hmm. i have studied a bit of it uh a little bit but uh, you know i i just that's not who i am so i didn't go too much into uh, uh, being able to count different kind of um, polyrhythms or uh, weird meters and so on i just learned by ear and mm -hmm. play what i hear and uh, that's how i write also Whatever melody I, I hear, I go along with that. Along the way, I can explore uh, some technical aspects of it, like may, what if I move the left hand to this, or, you know, but yeah, yeah it's like uh, if if it turns out to be ostinatos, that's, that's cool, but it's nothing sure. like deliberate. Sure, um, this is how you play. Exactly, it's, it's just what I hear in my head, and I do my best to make it work. But I know some drummers they they like to you know take out a specific rudiment and then this they decide to make a groove based on that or a fill like okay here i'm going to combine these two rudiments mm -hmm. i don't have all those rudiments in my bag i have the basics on a basic yeah. level but that's it um, yeah you have all yeah. those rudiments buddy you just don't play them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> or if you do, you're not you're not calling them rudiments. You know, I, I, I years ago I was uh, auditioning for this one. It doesn't matter. I was auditioning for this conservatory, and they said, "Well, would you play?" I don't even remember. You know, like uh, a, a flamadiddle or something like uh, that. And like <laughs> I, I, I go, I don't know what that is, uh, and and the guy goes, he goes, it's you know, blah 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 blah, and I go, oh this, blah, 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 and then I play it like thirty times faster than, uh, he <laughs> and he was like. You know, he just stared at me like, oh, okay. And I was like, I just don't know what they are. It's it's an exactly. ignorance. I can play them. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I understand that. And and for me, it, yeah, I could hear the inf – I should say I, I could assume the influence. But yeah. but I, I felt like, oh, this is just how Adam plays. And mm -hmm. that is wonderful. You can hear the influences, but you've made them your own. Um yeah. So my last question for you, based on this new album, Witness, especially, um, and I want to encourage everyone to go purchase to pre the, the pre-sale of Witness. Uh, it's available, I believe, on Bandcamp, if that's where I bought it from, at least. Um, yeah, uh, on Bandcamp, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, also on our homepage, volaband.com. Okay, okay, good, good. Um, but this this last question for me, is based on all the things I've said this whole time. If you were to pick an emotion, to name an emotion that drives the band, what is it? And what you know, what are you trying to say through these words and melodies? Mm -hmm. um, that's a good question. 
I have a word in mind, but it sounds so cheesy. <laughs> it's okay. Um, basically, something which, which goes back to the name of the band, uh, Vola, which means to fly in Italian. Um, and um, just the general feeling we we go for in, in most of our choruses, where we wanted to open up, and it feels like a bit like you're levitating or flying, or, you know, we want that openness. Yeah. Um, so I would say if I had to choose one word, I think freedom would be the closest one to it. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I <laughs> so watching the video, watching the video for Twenty Four Light Years, which is the uh, which is very cinematic, very well done. Um, there's that moment right when you break into the bridge section where yeah. the the ship the spaceship whatever it is fly mm -hmm. flies like a like a like a bug or a yeah. bird and i cried the first time i saw it i i mean the first time i saw it i cried and just thinking about it makes me kind of tear up you probably can't see but it gives me an emotional i mean it hit me hard mm -hmm. and what it said to me is hope mm -hmm. it's all going to be okay it's all going to be okay. Your music, your music has this uh, feeling of, well, that to me, you say freedom. That is so lovely. It's so right on the money. I mean, you'd know it better <laughs> than me, but my, right. My interpretation is like this combination of, hmm. okay, I get that the freedom, the flight, the hope, the, hmm. the, it's all, it's all going to be, it's all under control. Mm. It's, this world isn't lost. This world isn't broken. It's just a little off kilter, but it's all going to be okay. And it's because of bands like you, it's because of your desire to not follow tradition and to do your own thing. It's my hope, my goal, Adam, to, that just somehow, somehow there is this movement, that, that there's this moment that what you're doing becomes viral. It deserves that. It deserves a voice. It's really, truly lovely. And make sure that you take Rendezvous Point on tour with you wherever you go, because you two yes. bands, you two bands are absolutely right now my two favorite bands. I, I, oh. I love Rendezvous Point. You, you talk to those guys, you know how, I mean, you'll know how much I love them. They know how much I love them. Um, but Vola has fallen right next to them in line. You guys are just, ugh, it just, it just, <laughs> it, cr it crushes my heart in the best way. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. That's really lovely to hear. And a fun fact, we actually toured with Rendezvous Point in Europe uh, two years ago, one and a uh, half year, year ago, yeah. something like that. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much. That uh, It's really lovely to hear. Uh, beautifully, beautifully put. Oh, well, look, I, 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 I know this was very casual and that's the whole point. I want this to be about the human. Yeah. It, isn't, it isn't about promotion. However, people love to know the real story, man. And, <laughs> and you're a beautiful human. You're an incredible player, an absolute Thank classic you. player. You will be known. People will know who you are. And I mean, they already do. I, guys like me, we pay attention, man, you know? And so I just think that you guys are just so close to that crossover and, and <laughs> so deserve it of that. And so please don't stop. Please keep pursuing that art. And I'm going to beg every one of my listeners to go buy this new record and to see you when you go on tour and find your way to the States somehow and stay yes. in touch with me. <laughs> and For sure. I mean, really, really, truly, Adam, I am so deeply honored. And I was so thrilled that you said yes to be on the show. <laughs> I was really happy to, to be on and uh, really a, a pleasure. Really, really. Good. Uh, Good. So, yeah, when, uh, whenever we get over to the States, we'll stay in touch and, and meet up for sure. That's wonderful. I could have lived this house, but I won't.